Anne-Marie Lemay. Last December, the Prime Minister and the Quebec Premier gathered in Montreal with the relatives and friends impacted by the worst mass shooting in Canadian history. Geneviève Bergeron. The murder of 14 young women at the École Polytechnique. Marise Lagan. They read out the names of the victims. Et Annie Turcotte. In December 1989, a gunman barged into the school, separated the men from the women, and shot the female engineering students because he said he hated feminists who had ruined his life. His name was Mark Lepin. The tragedy was a turning point in the Canadian gun control debate. Je suis sûr que je vais être euh, rappelé de ça pendant euh, toute ma vie. Heidi Rathjen was there as a 23-year-old student. I was in a student union room and somebody just came in and said, there's a guy with a gun, close the door. We had no clue what was happening. Couldn't believe anybody would get hurt or much less die. After the tragedy, Heidi Rathjen became a leader of the gun control movement. And so we started a petition to ban assault weapons. And that petition became the largest petition in Canadian history with 560,000 signatures. Then Conservative Justice Minister Kim Campbell introduced the first mild gun control legislation in 1990. But then the Chrétien Liberal government brought in much tougher legislation in 1995, including a long gun registry. So six years after the tragedy, we got just basic controls on gun owners with possession and acquisition permits. Controls on guns, guns are registered, they're all accounted for. Limits on what type of guns um, could be uh, allowed in, so a ban on military assault weapons and large capacity magazines. The Conservative Party and the gun lobby went to war against the Liberal legislation and it was repealed by the Harper government in 2012. Then Public Safety Minister Vic Taves. Our position on the long gun registry has been clear. It does nothing to help put an end to gun crimes, nor has it saved one Canadian life. In fact, the number of gun homicides declined by about 50% during the years of the gun registry and has climbed by about the same amount since it was repealed. Thank you very much. Yes. In the last federal election, Justin Trudeau campaigned to bring back some gun control measures. Uh, here today... To and now the Liberals have introduced Bill C-71 which includes some minor adjustments regarding gun store record keeping and background checks. It is a step in the right direction. C-71 does contain important measures, so we're going to support it and get what we want. But basically, under the Conservatives, we went five steps back, and now with the Liberals, who got elected to a majority, on the basis of, a, of an election platform that contained gun control promises, um, we're going one step forward. Ontario gun store owner Wes Winkle is a spokesman for the pro-gun movement in Canada. He objects to Bill C-71's new requirements for gun stores to keep sales records for 20 years. It contains all the firearms records from... Data that can be accessed by policemen only with a search warrant based on evidence that a crime has been committed. He compares that to the former long gun registry. So now again, we're tying the firearm to the buyer. I guess that would sound reasonable to most people. What's the matter with that? I think for the most part, people don't, don't understand the volume of firearm transactions and how many actually sell. And uh, it puts on a very onerous process on the dealer to have to do that recording all the time. I guess a lot of people at home would, would, would think, OK, you're making arguments that this is inconvenient for you. They would say, tough luck. We want guns to be more safe. We want the system to be more safe. Absolutely. And, and uh, the industry understands that nobody has more interest in, in keeping guns out of the hands of criminals than the industry does. They're just wondering if whether or not it's a good use of resources, if this is actually one of the problems in our society or not, or if it's just uh, creating a, a, a large database of firearms that really isn't needed. Bill C-71 will again make it illegal to resell a gun to someone without checking to see if they have a proper firearms license. There's a huge loophole that was created by the Conservatives in eliminating the mandatory verification of a permit. This will come back with C-71, and this is one of the reasons why we support the bill. 
Right now, Canadian gun buyers face a background check of only five years of criminal and mental health records. Bill C-71 would remove that five-year limit. There's some concerns around that, whether or not it will attach more stigmatism to people coming forth with mental health concerns if they know that their, their firearms collections may be at risk or they're licensed to, to have firearms. I think most people at home would say, a bigger concern to me is whether that person has a gun. At that point, I think if somebody's struggling with their, with their thoughts, I think we'd like them to seek mental, or, uh, professional help. If it attaches a stigmatism to them bringing forth a, a mental health concern, that's our concern there. These mental health concerns were highlighted by the case of Lionel Desmond, a former Canadian soldier who returned from Afghanistan to Nova Scotia with post-traumatic stress disorder and ended up shooting his mother, his wife, his daughter and himself in 2017. Many of the shooters in the U.S. were veterans with PTSD. It's a huge risk factor and obviously uh, people with mental illness should not this type of mental illness should not have access to weapons. It's much too dangerous. Do you sell AR-15s here? Or was it? Although it is not part of Bill C-71, the Liberal government is considering further restriction of what are commonly called military assault weapons like the AR-15, which has been used in numerous mass shootings in the United States. So that is the infamous AR-15 rifle. Mm -hmm. It's a semi-automatic only action. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see it only has a, a setting for a safety and for a fire mode. Mm -hmm. In the military, they have a full auto designation, and, th and that, that's called the M16, and that's uh, prohibited in Canada. The look is what uh, distinguishes it. People think that it looks a lot more military or, or uh, and therefore more dangerous. It, mm -hmm. it actually is not at all. It's, it's quite humorous to us in the industry because it fires a relatively small cartridge. That's, mm -hmm. that's not as powerful as most of the hunting semi-automatics that we sell. But uh, as far as uh, mechanically, it, it's, to us in the industry, it's quite laughable to think that this is more dangerous than another semi-automatic rifle. There was a masked man came in and just started shooting. The AR-15 rifle was used in the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Connecticut. I was in the gym and I heard like seven loud booms. The first Baptist church shooting in Texas. And in the Parkland school shooting last year in Florida. He went up and down the hallway, shooting into the classrooms he shot through my door. Gun control advocates think it is absurd to debate whether an AR-15 can be defined as an assault weapon. When a weapon allows a perpetrator to kill dozens of people in a matter of minutes, that gun should not be allowed in private hands. These are the weapons that we want off our streets, out of our communities, out of the hands of ordinary civilians. It's not worth it. The benefits to the few who use them for recreational purposes are much too small compared to the risk for public safety. The key point about military-style weapons is how many bullets they can shoot. The magazine holds a maximum of five cartridges, and it pulls out like that. The cartridges go inside here. Even if a magazine looks large, by law in Canada, it must have a pin that limits it to holding only five bullets. Five rounds in Canada. Um, again, uh, magazines uh, in parts of the United States and that will hold 20 rounds or 30 rounds, mm -hmm. but in Canada, they're, they're restricted to five. On the internet, you can easily buy large capacity magazines that could hold up to 100 bullets, even though the law in Canada imposes a five bullet limit. Okay, so I've got my Glock. This is how those large magazines can be put to use. Ridiculous magazine. And uh, we're going to make a mess. In the cases of the last three mass shooters in Canada, Alexandra Bissonnette at the Quebec City Mosque, Richard Bain, who attacked the Quebec Premier's election night celebration, and Justin Bourke, who killed three police officers in Moncton. The shooters simply removed the pin that legally limited their magazines to five bullets. It's ridiculous. Somebody who's intent on, on killing exponential number of people just has to remove the pin. They don't care that it's illegal. Mm -hmm. they're, gonna, they're, they're about to commit murder, and often they will kill themselves afterwards. Alexandre Bissonnet had an assault weapon with two 30-bullet ammunition clips, and everybody in that mosque would have been dead had that gun not, gun not jammed. 
uh, obviously uh, we, we sell handguns as well. And, uh, Wes Winkle has a handgun section of his store that is only unveiled on request. Otherwise, uh, they stay in a display mode only. So what percentage of your business is handgun? 45% of our firearms businesses is handguns. Uh, the industry's identified a lot of uh, the individuals growing up uh, playing first-person shooter video games and getting an interest in the industry that way. And then uh, as they get older, they decide to get a license and to try it in real life. So uh, that's one thing we've seen growth in. But we, uh, the handgunning, and especially uh, in ladies and youth, the growth in handgun shooting has been phenomenal. So how big is this industry in Canada? How many jobs are relying so, on this? So we have uh, a little over 4,000 businesses uh, handling firearms in Canada and a total of 25,000 employees. So those are full-time employees that earn a living inside this industry in, in, uh, in a safe and, and structured manner. Mm -hmm. So a handgun ban would, would represent what to you, do you think? So we estimate that we could lose as many as 13 to 14,000 jobs in Canada if we were to have a handgun ban. Canada's present and proposed gun control legislation falls under the purview of Public Security Minister Ralph Goodale, who declined our request for an interview. Mr. Goodale often speaks privately about his desire to hold on to the Liberal Party's rural seats in Parliament. Gun control advocates think that approach is wrong-headed. The vast majority of, not only of Canadians, but of gun owners are in favour of banning assault weapons. Polling research has showed that if the Liberal government would take a strong stand of gun control, they would gain support, they would gain votes, as opposed to sitting on the fence now, trying to please everybody, pleasing nobody, and, and the worst part is not protecting public health. In the middle of the night, another shooting victim is collected from the streets of Toronto. The mayors of Toronto, Montreal, and other cities have asked for a handgun ban. But as the bodies pile up, the federal government seems almost paralyzed about what to do about it. Terence McKenna, CBC News, Toronto.